My name is Steve Patterson. I was born in Richmond Hill, Ontario. I grew up in London, Ontario, and I'm a comedian. Uh, my idea of perfect happiness is being with my friends that I grew up with and drinking um, strong beverages and uh, making fun of the world in that euphoric state of hallucinogenic alcoholic beverages. My greatest fear is delivering a joke that has worked before in front of uh, a large audience and it not working because I'd like to think it is the audience's fault but sometimes it's not, it's just me. I would say Jesus Christ, because uh, much like Canadian stand-up comedians, his parents were in denial of what he was for most of his life, and uh, by the time they figured out that he was that, he was dead. The characteristic I guess I dislike is that uh, I don't have an override switch in my brain. Often when I say things, uh, it offends my friends. Uh, which I don't care about, but it, it you know, is uncomfortable for my friends. For instance, we were whitewater rafting and the guide on our raft was very attractive and I was with 10 friends and uh, I simply asked her, trying to set up my friends, being a good wingman, I said, do you have uh, nine other friends that might come out with us tonight? And she kind of giggled and said no. And then I said, well, how about five really active ones? And that offended my friends, and then she didn't come with us on the night out either. But she laughed, which I thought was, was uh, good. I hate cockiness. There's a fine line between confidence and pretension and cockiness. And I hate cocky people, particularly ones that can't back it up with actual achievements or actions. And I make it my goal to bring cocky people down not just a couple notches on the ladder, but right off the ladder. And I went to the University of Western Ontario, which is a very cocky school. And some days I would just uh, sit in the middle of the university and make rich girls cry. I don't lie big. I just lie a little so that someone will feel uh, a lot better. My broken nose. See, it was broken in the middle. I ran into a backstop when I was little and broke my nose. I don't know if that's what you mean by characteristic, but that's the one I noticed the most. But Owen Wilson has a broken nose too, and he's doing all right. So he's an inspiration to all of us broken nosers. I feel safe and secure living in Canada. You know, uh, the worst that happens in one of our uh, elections is, is a guy gets a pie thrown at him or something. And I like that. I like a country that attacks people with dessert. That's the kind of country I want to live in. Frosty and delicious. I'd settle for a Canadian Comedy Award at this point. I think I've been out of Canada so much over the past few years that uh, Canada doesn't really know what I do <laughs> and I probably have more of a chance at a British award because I've spent a lot of time over there but I'm coming back and I want to get a Canadian comedy award that's it I don't aim high I just want a beaver trying to bring laughter to every situation and uh, I don't think that should be an excessive thing I'm only saying this because one of my bosses in an ad agency where I worked before I became a comedian said hey Steve not everything can be a joke and then he fired me, and I thought that was excessive. They say patience is a virtue, and that a lot of men don't have it, but I love females that don't have it as well. Why would you wait for something that you really want? Go out and get it. I don't like when people say, Steve, be patient, because I'm not in hospital. There's no need for me to be patient. I uh, want what I want, and I try to go get it as quickly as I can. I would like to come back in my next existence as a sundress. Love sundresses and uh, I'd love to be on the inside of one. And if I was one, I could be the inside and outside of a sundress. If the gods had their way and they brought me back in another life, I would probably be men's underwear. Because it's the exact opposite of what I would like to be and that's probably what they would do to me. And I can't imagine a worse existence than being <laughs> a man's underwear. Any man, not even Dave Beckham, you know, I know he knows how to bend it, but I still wouldn't want to be his gitch. The sound of true laughter. So not like, <laughs> that's fake laughter, or, huh. but <laughs> true, true laughter. And I, I'm trying to conjure it up now, but you all know what it sounds like, unless you're a loser. Uh, my favorite food is very boring, meatloaf with tomato sauce on it. I know, it's a big chunk of meat, but I've, uh, 
Irish background and that's, hey kids, we're having a big pot of meat. All right, perfect. Sitting through a bad comedy show, there's nothing worse. And I hope that I never bring people to that lowest depth of despair. Again, I'm gonna come back to Jesus Christ, <laughs> which sounds pretty cocky to compare yourself to Jesus. But here's the thing, the age I am right now, right, is the age Jesus was when the world figured out he was Jesus. I'm 33 right now. And, <laughs> and up until then, his parents <clears throat> were denying that he was Jesus. His mom would say, Jesus, clean your room. And he would say, I am Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And she would say, yeah, sure you are, and I'm a virgin. Now clean your room. And I feel, I feel that my parents are also in denial of what I do. Because they would be, my dad would say, Steve, come work at the bike shop. And I would say, I am a comedian. And he would say, sure you are, and I'm a virgin. Which doesn't make any sense, because he had five sons. Reading fiction, I find, is a way to learn without actually feeling like you're learning. So I love reading because I uh, travel a lot. And uh, reading means that you don't have to speak to the person sitting next to you on the plane who's just asked what you do and found out you were a comedian. A gymnast of some sort. I know that's a weird answer for a heterosexual man to give, but I'd like to be able to balance, you know, my buddy on my feet and spin him around in the air because I just think it would be an, a really cool thing to do at parties. I've seen uh, German gymnasts, unfortunately male German gymnasts, do that at a party and I thought it was the best party trick in the world. Just be able to spin your buddy around on your feet and it takes a lot of strength too and you get to wear chalk on your hands which is fun because then you can, it's like you have a cocaine habit but you don't. A woman in Nova Scotia who's whose husband was actually uh, terminally ill and couldn't make a show and said, we saw you on TV, we'd really love to come, but we can't get there. So I ended up sending a bunch of stuff to their house, just old tapes and things, and they really appreciated that. And little things like that make me feel worthwhile for doing what I do. Cream rises to the top. And uh, if you believe that you can be the cream of what you do, then you keep doing it until you're at the top. And I know that on a very literal sense, it just refers to coffee. But on a deeper plane, it means that if you're, yeah, if you're good at what you do, then eventually you'll be at the top of your game in that. And if you're not, you won't. And I have to believe that, otherwise I'd kill myself. I wish I'd gone pee before this interview started, because I, I have to pee now and it's a little uncomfortable. But I drink a lot of cranberry juice, so it's gonna be okay.